So, another free vibration problem here. A cantilever is made of a rectangular hollow section and we're given the various dimensions of it and we're told it carries a mass of 1,500 kilograms at its free end. Calculate the natural frequency of the mass and cantilever. So, let's draw out the diagram. Uh, we've got a cantilever here with a mass on the end and we know this dimension here in the question is 2 meters um, now uh, let's draw this nice and big we know the cross section is a hollow section and uh, this uh, dimension here is 50 millimeters the depth and the breadth of the section is 200 millimeters and the thickness which I'm just going to label like this is 3 millimeters also important to note down everything else uh, the mass which is 1500 kilograms and the elastic modulus which is E which is equal to 200 kilonewtons per millimeter squared now it's important to write down all these units that we um, are given in the question so that there's no confusion later on when we're um, doing unit conversion and all that kind of thing so it's important to make notes of the units of everything given in the question now we've written everything down how do we start the question well I always start these questions by um, trying to find a method a route um, that I can take through equations I don't actually write anything down to begin with um, in terms of numbers just purely um, just the formulas um, just to see whether everything's going to work out. So um, let's start off with what we're trying to work out. We're trying to work out the frequency f. So I know I can calculate the frequency by simply omega divided by 2 pi. Now how do I work out omega? So that's my next problem and I know omega is equal to k over m square root the whole thing like that now uh, we've got a mass uh, that's given in the question that's not a problem a stiffness k uh, that's not given so that's the next thing that we need to work out and if you was watching the last tutorial um, you'd know that we use the equation f equals k times the displacement now um, we're not given a displacement in the question, so uh, we can't simply use, uh, rearrange this formula in terms of k um, to work out a uh, work out the stiffness um, as we don't have a displacement. So we need another equation, uh, and this is why it helps by drawing out the diagram because I'm looking up here and I am seeing. That we have a cantilever with a point load at the end so I know immediately that the maximum deflection uh, can be calculated simply by doing PL cubed divided by 3 EI that's standard for a point load cantilever in beam um, now I'm just going to make a little note here um, that our P is the same as F um, I'm just I've just written it in terms uh, with P just purely because uh, that's the standard notation in most textbooks so um, to try and avoid confusion I've written it like that first off so going back to our original problem uh, we need to work out K uh, we've, we know that this maximum displacement for a cantilever in beam is PL cubed over 3 EI I being the second moment of area and P being the force now, um, if we try and get this equation here that we've written looking like this one, um, we can rearrange in terms of the force 
F or P I'm going to keep it in F so we've got some consistency going on here you know that F is equal to the displacement I'm simply rearranging this whole equation here um, displacement times 3EI and divide that all by L cubed like so it's not very clear is it oh, I'll let again scribble that out L cubed um, now obviously still looking for displacement and uh, now I would go to write the units of everything that I'm looking at I'm looking at the force you no know, that's normally in newtons or kilonewtons and stiffness is normally in kilonewtons per meter so um, to rearrange this equation um, let's just quickly rearrange it over here draw an arrow a terrible arrow but hey ho um, we know that F divided by the displacement is equal to K uh, let's just box this off before it all gets messy so looking at this force here to get it uh, into a stiffness we need to divide by displacement on both sides so if we divide F by displacement that will become K um, if we divide this term, this whole term here by displacement, this displacement will cancel. Um, so we will have the equation K is equal to 3, 3EI three divided by L cubed. Just go over again that quickly. I've simply um, change this force into a stiffness by using this equation up here I know that uh, force divided by displacement is equal to the stiffness so I've divided F by a displacement to make it K and I've divided this side by displacement as well because whatever you do to one side you must do to the other so I've divided this side by displacement and um, the displacement that would have been down here has cancelled this one off so it's simply become 3EI over L cubed. Now um, we can work out our stiffness from that and uh, the only thing that we don't have here would be our second moment area and that under normal circumstances is equal to BD cubed over 12 when it's all symmetrical and we are looking at a symmetrical section so there's no problems with that now um, we've found a route um, that we can take and that will get us to our frequency so I can start off with my second moment of area to calculate um, let's write that down so we calculate our I to begin with second moment of area uh, important thing to note is that it's a rectangular hollow section so we do not want to work out a um, a second moment area for the whole section so if we did um, this red square here the whole thing to begin with uh, we would do 200 times by 50 cubed um, divide that by 12 that gets us the second moment area of the red square all of it everything inside it but we want to minus the um, second red square should we say the shaded region here we want to minus that box now so we're going to do um, minus 100 49 millimeters times 44 millimeters cubed all divided by 12 like so now um, if you're wondering why I've used these dimensions well it's because this shaded red square in the middle um, we've got a thickness of three millimeters on either side so um, this dimension from here to here becomes 50 minus 3 millimeters here minus 3 millimeters here so that becomes 44 millimeters our depth and then 
uh, this dimension here to here becomes 200 minus 3 millimeters here and another 3 millimeters on this side so it becomes 194 millimeters so uh, I personally like right like putting brackets around these terms so there's no confusion um, no mess ups when we put it into calculator so um, if we put that into the calculator um, we will get um, a value in terms of millimeters to the four but um, we want to um, convert from millimeters into meters because um, when we work out our stiffness we want that in newtons per meter and if you're wondering why that's because when we use this equation down here we specifically want newtons per meter divided by kilograms um, so that when we work out our omega it, um, it works out okay into radians per second so we're doing it because we need to be careful of the units when we use this formula down here so um, because it's millimeters four millimeters to the four and we're converting to meters to the four um, we need to divide by uh, by 10 to the 12 so put that over here so when we work it out that will come to 7.06 times 10 to the minus 7 which uh, we'll make a note is meters to the 4 so we've got our second moment of area now um, we can work out our stiffness K and our K we said is equal to 3 EI over L cubed um, so we can do 3 times now as I've said before we need to be careful of the units so um, this EI here which is in kilonewtons per millimeter squared we need to convert this to uh, newtons per meter squared so that the units all work out so we need to times by 10 to the 9 because we're converting millimeters per millimeter squared into per uh, meter squared so that'll be, that'll be 10 to the 6 and then from kilonewtons to newtons which will be 10 to the 3 so combined 10 to the 9 now times that by our second moment of area that we just worked out like so minus seven get a point in there and then divide that all by the length cubed which we can leave in meters two cubed so um, when we work that out that will come to 52,950 newtons per meter and then uh, penultimate step we can work out our omega which would be our stiffness that we just worked out 52,950 divided by the mass given in the question which is 1,500 and square root the whole thing and then that should come out as 5.94 rads or radians per second and then last step uh, to work out our frequency would be our angle of frequency that we just worked out which is 5.94 divide that by 2 pi and we'll get an answer of 0 0.95 oh, terrible 9 but that is a 9 I can assure you uh, 95 Hertz and there you go that's our answer and the question done so hopefully you can see how I like to approach these kind of questions and it kind of assures that um, we're heading in the right direction before we start wasting time doing calculations um, so that's maybe one way you might like to approach these kind of questions.